Here it is. I need to continue my research in my archives. Here it is. One of the victims, Kenneth Butler, was involved in the story of the stolen Hellenistic treasures. A visit to his pawn shop should tell me more. Mr. Butler's key matches the lock perfectly. A flare pistol. Perhaps it was pawned by a destitute sailor. The ram's heads. This necklace belongs to the five rams of Mytilin collection. Interesting. That means that Kenneth Butler owned a part of this collection all this time, ten years after the theft. It looks as though Mr. Butler kept a careful record of his operations. Crampons and a sharp ice axe would only be brought here by a mountaineer. What's up with you, lad? What are you waiting for? I'm waiting for my brother to be released. Your brother? The one that you caught, beat up and imprisoned. Ah, the murderer. He ain't killed no one, copper. What's your mouth, lad? 
Else you'll be joining that worthless brother of yours. A fairly long pole with a forked end. Unable to see any higher, I need to find something to lift my lamp. This should be useful. Nothing interesting here. This is most definitely a bullet hole. The brick cracks are fresh. Watson, there was a third shot fired in this street. Constable Marrow, I would value your assistance in this investigation. It would be my pleasure, Mr. Holmes. I would like to make sure that there are no places in Half Moon Street where a man could hide while you were running through it with your lamp. All right, Mr. Holmes, what should I do? Take your lamp and start walking, just as you did before, and try to find me. Understood. I can see you very well, Mr. Holmes. All right, Constable. Let's try again. I'll find another place to hide. Here you are, Mr. Holmes. All right, Constable. Let's try again. I'll find another place to hide. Mr. Holmes, it wasn't difficult to find you at all. It is obvious now. No one could escape Constable Marrow's lamp while hiding in the street. Thank <laughs> you. 
These tools are exactly what I need to climb the wall. This is exactly what we need in order to imitate the flash of the fireworks. Why are you looking at me all the time like that? I'm just watching you, lad. I never know what to expect from people like you. People like me? Yes, street beggars and thieves. I ain't a thief. Oh, no. Then where did you get whatever it is that you're gnawing on? I very much doubt that you bought it. What ain't seen can't hardly be stolen. Constable Marrow, Watson, I would like to perform another kind of reenactment with your help. I'm listening, Mr. Holmes. I want to check if Leighton's testimony can be trusted, if someone could vanish into thin air at a specific moment. But Holmes, I don't see how. I am going to be the mysterious gentleman whom Leighton followed. I will stand exactly where he saw him before he was blinded by the flash. Watson. You will be Leighton. When I fire the signal flare, you should start to chase me. I understand, Holmes. You, Constable Marrow, just play your part and do exactly as you did. Just, please, wait five seconds after the signal flare. I doubt that Polly Powell would have screamed any earlier. As you say, Mr. Holmes. Let us begin, then. Catch me if you can. This wall is cast in shadow. It would be difficult to see anyone scaling it. You see anything? <coughs> Holmes? Are you there? <coughs> I cannot see you, Mr. Holmes. Dr. Watson, it seems that Mr. Holmes has disappeared. Don't worry, gentlemen. I am up here, above your heads. How on earth did you get up there, Holmes? I am using crampons and a climbing axe, although the person we are looking for did not leave any traces of such tools. Constable, is there any way to get to the top of this building? Yes, Mr. Holmes, I can show you. The door to the building can be found from Whitechapel Street. Gentlemen, I am on my way down. It's empty. It's empty. Someone broke through the window to get inside the attic, but in his haste he 
ripped his jacket. A cluster of thick black threads. They're unusually strong. I should examine them under the microscope. These shards of glass are from the window above. We can conclude that the person whom Leighton saw climbed up the wall, broke into the attic window and escaped through the hatch. Let us take a closer look. It is not a thread, but a hair. I very much doubt that it is human. I need to compare this sample with a human hair and a horse hair. Hmm, a shaving brush is usually made from horse hair. Watson, uh, could you please pass me your shaving brush? Here you are. Uh, Watson, look, what's outside the window? Well, I don't see anything. Ouch! Holmes! Oh, don't make such a fuss, one little hair. Human hair is significantly thinner than the black sample. This is a most unusual hair. The horse hair is thinner than the hair that we found. So, this black hair belongs to an animal and it is larger than a horse, a hare from a large and exotic animal. Wiggins, my lad, what are you doing here? You'd best be leaving and be quick about it. I've done nothing wrong. You'd learn more by watching Mr. Holmes. He knows exactly what he's doing. Not like you. Oi, watch your tongue. Mr. Holmes? We have good news for you, Wiggins. The investigation has proven very interesting so far. We found facts and details that confirm your brother's innocence. I knew it, Mr. Holmes. But for now, Wiggins, we need your help. Anything you like, Gov. I need you to locate a circus. 
that has stopped over in London, it needs to have disposed of at least one exotic animal. A very large one. You can count on me, Mr. Holmes. I do hope that those children don't get into trouble, Holmes. Don't worry, Watson. I predict some news in... seven seconds. Mr. Holmes, we found it! Here it is! And this is a young Indian elephant, the highlight of the show. Duval Brothers, a well-known travelling circus that is currently stopped in London. I believe that is exactly the type of circus we are looking for. I'll pay it a visit. Hi, you! Stop right there. Good morning, sir. Pardon me, but why am I not allowed to walk around here? Because it's private. Well, I only wanted to meet the artistes. Hmm? You're wanting to apply for... Nah. You don't look like the type of uh, artistic lock picker that we're looking for. You might be surprised. What? Nah. I don't think so. Clear off! Stay where you are. What are you doing here, and where is Sherlock Holmes? Calm down, Watson. Take deep breaths now. It's me. Oh, thank God, Holmes. I can't get used to your disguises. Thank you, Watson. That means I am ready to go. What's your name? My name is Nigel. I'm here to open the locks. Talented, eh? Let's see. Go inside the marquee and show yourself to Charles Foley. And I'd highly advise you not to trick him. Got that? I've got it. So, 
Everything is here, just as you asked. And what about the money? Some of the barrels are wet. Transportation issues, it couldn't be helped. Whatever. We'll be here after midnight to pick up the supplies. I want to be paid first. No. You'll be paid after we make the transfer, as I said. Right? I hope that no one saw you. The police are on the lookout. Of course not! I'm a professional! Glad to hear it. Be ready for tonight, then. There is a spot on this barrel that was intentionally painted out. The crest of the Honorable Artillery Company. Could it be gunpowder? I need to be sure. Judging by the fractions and the scent, I can confirm that it is, in fact, gunpowder. The barrels are roughly clustered. It seems as though they were brought here in a hurry. This printing press is old, but still quite capable of printing hundreds of pages per day. Hmm, there are enough posters to paste across half of London's walls. That's a picture of a contemporary gentleman wearing a Robin Hood hat. Interesting. From lambs into lions, those are words of encouragement and defiance. This poster was clearly made to fire up rebellion amongst the people. Powder kegs, a printing press, and a great many blank papers. All of this was stolen by the Merry Men quite recently. And these poster samples. I am quite sure it is not a coincidence. The Merry Men are planning some sort of sabotage. Stop right here. Who are you? Are you Charles Foley? Maybe. They say that I can open any door. Do they now? We'll see that lock near the chains on a table over there. Open that. Thank you. 
not her, right? What's your name? Nigel Shirley, from York. Ah, Nigel from York. Never heard anything about you. How'd you hear about me? It's a long story. I met your brother, Vincent the Butcher Foley, in prison. He told me all about his betrayal and all about you. Before I was released, he told me that you might find a job for me one day and pay me some money for me craft. Well, he died. Seven days ago, in prison. Hmm. I'm sorry to hear that. That's all right. The traitor has paid the blood price for it. And you'll do the job anyway, because I need a talented lock picker. I know just where to search for his legacy. It's all about the Hellenistic treasures, isn't it? Bosh, you fool. Now, listen up. You'll come with us tonight, and you better mind yourself. Us? Wait, who's coming then? Billy, Jack and me. And what will I get for that? We'll share the loot. The one you seem to know about. Right. Wait for us at the abandoned manor house on a corner of Ledbrook Grove and Kensington Park Road at midnight. Deal. <laughs> 